Millions of people plan on flying somewhere for Thanksgiving. Crazy. I, I, I'm just hoping it goes smooth and everybody is pleasant and kind and considerate. Wendy Avery is traveling with her granddaughter, daughter and spouse Jenny to Austin, Texas for Turkey Day. We've been at home for what, two years and now we're going to get out. Concerns about cancellations and chaotic travel, Jenny isn't buying it. It's my birthday, nothing's going to get me down. We're going to have fun today. TSA agents are required to get vaccinated by November 22nd because of a federal mandate. That's three days before Thanksgiving. That deadline falls during some of the busiest travel days of the year. We're going down to Santa Barbara, California. SeaTac Airport can see as many as 46,000 travelers on Saturday as well as Sunday. And on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, it could see an extra 3,000 flyers. In October, 60% of TSA employees were reportedly vaccinated against COVID-19. No word what the latest numbers are. If there's a slowdown in travel because there aren't enough agents, then I don't know what to say. Some travelers were hit hard by recent operational meltdowns at Southwest and American Airlines, not to mention the staffing issues at most airlines. The delays and disruptions are already starting for some families. We have already seen two delays via our text messages. I'm hoping that's the last of it. So we're positive, though. We're going to hang out, have some food, and hopefully be able to get on plane on time, or at least someone on time. At SeaTac Airport, Suzanne Fong, Como News. In the same, the same cycle of no laws being enforced and empty threats. Outraged, frustrated, and fed up. Tonight, neighbors in Ballard want answers. The city recently put its 72-hour parking rule back into place. Some residents in Ballard say no one is enforcing it. RVs and abandoned cars have been sitting in parts of the city for months, and it would appear that nothing is being done about it. Como's Jonathan Cho is live from Ballard with this Project Seattle report. Jonathan? Well, Eric, SDOT is slapping notices on some of these problematic vehicles, but neighbors say there has to be follow-through beyond just the warnings. This is home surveillance video showing two Seattle police officers putting an orange warning notice on this minivan late Thursday evening. It says it needs to be moved within 72 hours or else the owner faces fines and a possible tow. As soon as they leave, it gets ripped down by Charles Woodward. You cannot come out here and harass people. That's him yelling at us earlier in the week, telling us he owned this sidewalk now occupied by his personal belongings, including dozens of lawnmowers. This morning, his van is still here at the corner of 8th Avenue Northwest and 49th Street, but at least he now knows the clock is ticking. And the Seattle Department of Transportation is also putting these other RV owners on notice. These people have learned that there are no consequences for their actions. Even with this latest move, neighbor Rob Harwood says he still has doubts about the city following through because in some cases, it's already past the deadline. It's supposed to be moved on the 18th. That was yesterday. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, doesn't surprise me. And the RV is still there. If there are no laws being enforced and other RV owners see what's being allowed here, that's just going to bring more of it here. Earlier, we saw a parking enforcement officer inspecting RVs in this problematic area in Ballard, but no tickets or warning notices were issued. We're still waiting on SDOT to tell us what's going on and why they were out there. But SDOT says since mid-October, when enforcement of the 72-hour rule resumed, the parking team has issued about 600 tickets and impounded more than 250 vehicles. It's unclear how many were considered personal dwellings, but the agency says this rule now applies to all vehicles, even ones being used for shelter. And those people, a really small number of them, are just burning compassion that then we don't have left over for all the other people that are not causing anyone any problems and just need help. Alaska state troopers are in Tacoma for the next two days to recruit officers with major signing bonuses and moving expenses. Camus Nick Papa reports on the incentives that the agency is promoting, hoping to recruit officers in our state who lost their jobs in light of the recent vaccine mandate. Alaska State Trooper Sergeant Bryce Waite has heard from many members of law enforcement in our state. They're worried. They have concerns. They're worried about the vaccine mandates. They're worried about the political climate. They're worried about 
uh, the things that are, that are being asked to do or, or not to do. So um, Wade and a few other troopers from Alaska are at the LeMay Car Museum in Tacoma for a job fair of sorts, attempting to recruit local officers with hiring bonuses and moving expenses. There's a lot of really high quality individuals uh, and some really high quality law enforcement officers that we want to speak with. Because their agency is looking to fill about 60 positions, some of which would come with potentially a $20,000 signing bonus and $10,000 to move to the last frontier. This recruitment comes at a time where several officers in Washington have lost their jobs because of the recent state vaccine mandate. Washington State Patrol, for example, lost 67 officers, six sergeants, and a captain because they refused to get the shot. Though Waite says they aren't in Washington specifically because of the mandate, he says it has played a factor for some officers because Alaska doesn't have a vaccine mandate for its troopers. It's not popular. Uh, there's a lot of people that have a very strong opinion about it. Um, that's not something that we uh, have a mandate on. In the time we were at this event, only a handful of people spoke with troopers about potential job opportunities. None of them wanted to speak with us on camera, but they either told us or the troopers from Alaska that the main reason they're interested is because they feel like they can't effectively do their job in Washington because of new, stricter laws going into place. They want to be able to do their job and do it to the best of their ability. In Tacoma, Nick Popham. Como News. Hi everyone, I'm Preston Phillips from Como News. Thanks for checking out the Como YouTube channel. You can see more of our videos right here by clicking on the video links for more news from the Seattle area and Western Washington. Oh, and don't forget to click the subscribe button below so you don't miss our YouTube updates.